If you could make your dream video game, what would it be? Well, if it's anything else than a walking simulator, you're gonna need some advanced enemy AI. Now, AI is basically the backbone of most AAA games these days. It can elevate combat to the highest of highs, but bad AI can tear it all down. As you might know, I've made some first-person shooters through the years, and as a result, I've had to make a lot of enemies. Now, through my creative process and upon reflection, I've realized a lot of things. Uh, one of them being that, in fact, I suck at making AI. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's so hard, man. It's so hard. Or, or like we say in the Netherlands, kapot moeilijk, yes? Now, the enemies in my games usually do technically work. Keyword being technically. It's basically all duct taped together nonsense that is way too complex, honestly. So yeah, we can do better. Now, I've created an FPS template before that has allowed me and many other creators to rapidly develop FPS games. Today, I'm thinking to do the same, but for AI. As always, I'm working in Dreams, the fantastic PlayStation creation engine that mostly everyone has forgotten about. Well, whatever, let's do it. Now, why is making enemy AI so damn hard? Good question! Besides the obvious difficulty of game development, programming and integrating systems, the real issue of AI is that creating realistic and unpredictable behavior requires a high level of oversight and planning, or else you just get lost in the mess. There are really two main challenges I face in the enemy AI skill barrier. One is enemy positioning and pathfinding. It can be really difficult to get enemies to flow through your level, getting them to jump over vaultable objects, find their way through complex 3D arenas. The second main challenge is, of course, the decision-making of the AI in general. This is the stuff that I lose sleep over. When should the enemy move and in what direction? When should they attack? How do you decide which enemy is even allowed to attack? How do you decide the best piece of cover to hide behind? When should the enemy even move to cover? The type of AI that scares me most is the type you'd find in a game like Uncharted 4. Vertical level design with a player that can skill most geometry, but simultaneously realistic human enemies that need to pressure the player, take cover, flank, throw grenades, and realistically lose sight of the player and try to find them again. Now I don't think I'm the only one that finds AI daunting. Ever notice that a significant amount of starting game developers make zombie survival games? I don't think it's a coincidence. Zombies are like the easiest AI. If you figure out the pathfinding, all they need to do is walk to the player and apply damage when close. Even my first shooter was one with these kinds of enemies. But enemies for arena shooters and souls likes are a bit different, aren't they? Again, AI is overwhelming on the whole, so let's instead look at the most fundamental actions that can make up a behavior. Like action 1, walking around or strafing in random directions. This happens often with groups of enemies in games without cover systems. You can't have all of them just awkwardly stand there, after all. Action 2, pathfind to a specific target. Often enemies don't actually walk around randomly, but try to get to some point for some reason. Pathfinding just means they avoid obstacles on the way there. Running to the player also falls under pathfinding to a target. Action 3, melee attack. Almost every enemy in every game has some sort of melee or close range attack. Now this might surprise you, but with just these three actions, I've basically described most enemies in melee based games already. The nuance of course comes in with the melee attack, right? There's an endless amount of melee attacks you can come up with, but really from a top-down programming perspective, really all that's happening is enemy moves around randomly, enemy moves towards you, enemy tries to hit you. Move beyond melee games and we find a couple more actions. Like action 4, ranged attack. Of course applies to shooter enemies, but even melee combat games will often have enemies that launch projectiles of some kind. Action 5, take cover. And 6, follow scripted movement like a guard pattern as part of stealth or jumping over a gap. Now, there are certainly more actions out there, and AAA games surely pull off a lot of complex stuff. My point is, AI becomes a lot less daunting when you think about the actions first, because you really don't need that many actions to have a satisfying combat loop. Of course, the real challenge is creating behavior from these actions. From my admittedly limited understanding of real game development, AI in video games most commonly used to be done via finite state machines. An AI would have a bunch of states, consisting of multiple actions, like investigate a sound the player might have made, shoot at the player while moving around, and then the states are activated by things happening in the environment. If the enemy has just been shot, it might want to get to cover, for example. Now with my previous AI, the idea was to make a state machine, but instead I produced spaghetti. <laughs> now the reason why is that I failed to separate the different states in my head, right? So for example, my last infantry AI had a take cover state. But of course, while taking cover, sometimes the enemy should come up and shoot for a bit, right? So what I did is I connected the cover state back into the shoot state and now it's like, why well, have different states in the first place if I'm just gonna interconnect them? It became just a huge mess. Again, I failed to separate all the elements. This time I want to make something modular, which forces me to think about this kind of problem in an entirely different light. So I have a new layout plan. 
And now see AI like any other logic or program you can think of. A system with three elements. 1. A sensor that kicks off the program. 2. A processor that works through logic of some kind to come some sort of a decision. And 3. An actuator, the thing that requires input to function. So those actions I discussed earlier, those will be the actuators. And instead of getting immediately bogged down in when and how they should activate like I did previously, I will create all these actions and necessary sensors first, and then allow creators using my template to create their own processors that will allow for tons of unique AI to be created from this one template. I'm basically creating my own gadgets using the Dreams gadgets. Finally then, creation time. First gadget will be a player sensor. This one will check if the player is visible to the AI and in its field of view. Along with that I also make values like the range and exact location usable. The second gadget will be a logic chip that makes the AI constantly walk in a random direction at a random speed. This logic I actually created last video for my Christmas first person shooter, just reusing it here. And talking about reusing, I can also reuse AI pathfinding to a specific location like the player or a random point in the level. This logic I just pulled from my previous AI and added it to be a bit more customizable for this template. Now when I say pathfinding, really I mean obstacle avoidance because Dreams has no real system to do this type of thing. In normal game engines they have what you call nav meshes. This is basically a flat map of the environment that makes it easy for the AI to understand how to avoid obstacles. Doing a calculation of where to go in 3D is an absolute disaster. In 2D, it's a cakewalk. All of this results in the amazing thing that enemies won't accidentally fall off a roof. And know where they can and can't walk of course, so pathfinding is just a matter of calculating a 2D line through the obstacles. In Dreams, there is no such thing as a nav mesh. There's not even such a thing as a mesh. <laughs> it's all volumes, right? So how do I make sure enemies don't walk off cliff faces? Well, it's really simple. Invisible walls. <laughs> and pathfinding? Well, what pathfinding? I just make the character turn either left or right when coming across obstacles. I can't do everything, okay? I have my limits. With the things I've created so far, you can kind of start to see how one goes about creating their own unique AI. I can, for example, say, hey, if the player is visible, walk towards the player. If the player is not visible, walk around in a random direction. Or I can say, hey, if the player is within close range, walk around in a random direction. But if the player is far away, walk towards them to avoid getting lost. Next thing I made is some basic shooting logic, both hitscan and projectiles. I got stuck on some dreamy business that resulted in a frustrated tweet or two, but I won't bother you with that. Something I've never done before and has always kind of scared me is a stealth system. It needs to be done though, because it's very hard to make an action game without even light stealth elements. The reason is, it's just very lame and honestly hard to justify from a story standpoint that any time you enter a combat space, every single enemy knows where you are already. For most of my games, to avoid stealth systems, I literally spawn in the enemies when the fight starts, which is only acceptable because I'm not a professional, so let's try to fix that. The stealth system I created works exactly as you'd expect. The enemy has a view cone, if the player is in that cone and visible for a certain amount of time, stealth is ended. The closer the player is to the enemy, the less time is needed to break stealth. The guard pattern issue I solved in a very dreams way. I created a cube that can be entered as a playable character. By using a character animator you can trace the guard path yourself and make the enemy follow it. I did some other small stuff as well, like creating a basic melee attack and jump attack and a burst firing shooting chip. I also made a basic cover system, yes really basic, the enemy just crouches when it comes across a cover chip. Again the hard part will be making the decisions like when to go to cover and which piece of cover. As part of the melee attacks I created two group behavior chips. One only allows the closest two enemies to attack the player and the other only allows two random enemies to attack the player. None of my games have used group behavior in this way before so I often ran into the issue that two times the amount of enemies meant the player would take two times as much damage on average, draining health insanely fast. I also asked on Twitter if any other dreamers had some AI tips to share and came across a pathfinding system created by Dream's logic god Visium. It's really simple but effective. Using four supplier zones, this logic essentially allows you to create paths that the AI will follow. It did take me a long time to figure out because for some reason one of the directions was mapped incorrectly, but you know, nothing that two hours of frustration and trying random stuff won't fix. The final behavior is something I've really dreaded for a long time. Baked traversal. When dealing with vertical level design, the best kind of level design, sometimes you need an enemy to jump up to the player's level or jump across a gap. The easiest way to do that would be to create a scripted animation that's always the same and happens in the same location. Then you kind of cheat by putting zones inside the combat arena that signify where the player is and using that signal to make enemies seek out the scripted movement in response. So here's my idea, and hold up, you'll want to listen to this, okay? We take two invisible cubes and we put tags on them, right? So we use both and our mover to systems to really basically calculate the distance. I don't think it's teleporting. Or we could just do this. 
Huzzay! We did it! Well, I'm happy I felt anxiety about making this system for about a year. All of the actions are in the template now, and after just 12 more hours of relentless polishing, I was ready to release it to the world. But of course, I wanted to do a little proof of concept first. I used my cancelled Dragon's Dogma inspired game to do this. And oh man, it was so much easier and faster to make custom AI and keep a good overview of it. I actually enjoyed developing the AI's behavior, now I wasn't developing the individual actions at the same time and getting lost in the mess. If you're curious about what the AI does, I made this bear enemy walk in a random direction, but run towards the player when the player is too far away. I also made the bear run towards the player at random intervals for a random duration to trigger melee attacks. When close to the player, a punch or jump attack is randomly triggered. When the player climbs up to the high ground and the AI isn't in the same area, it will pathfind to the specific jump point and it looks like he dynamically jumps up to your level. Now as you can see, randomness does play a role in AI. You really don't need to get bogged down with making all AI behavior make sense. A belief I've had and saw confirmed again when I asked online. Sometimes making everything randomized is more fun as long as you keep the basics right. You know, not making an enemy take cover on the side the player is standing. Now this template is released now in Dreams and you can use it if you want to. Now, I don't know how many Dreamers will find use for it since it does require some significant logic knowledge to get to work, but I know one person who's gonna use this and that's me because enemy AI has held me back for the longest time and I now finally feel like there's some light at the end of this tunnel. Of course, if you want to see what kind of crazy games we're gonna make with this, you may subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around.